Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Schultz. Today's Japanese folktale is one that has an interestingly familiar theme to it of a single god sending a son down to earth to learn and to become better. And he does. This is The Good Thunder. Folks say that Raiden, the thunder, is an unloving spirit, fearful and revengeful, cruel to man. These are folks who are mortally afraid of the storm, and who hate lightning and tempest. They speak all the evil they can of Raiden and Reitaro, his son. But they are wrong. Raiden-sama lived in a castle of cloud set high in the blue heaven, he was a great and mighty god, a lord of the elements. Rei Taro was his one and only son, a brave boy, and his father loved him. In the cool of the evening, Raiden and Rei Taro walked upon the ramparts of the castle of cloud, and from the ramparts they viewed the doings of men upon the land of reed plains. North and south and east and west they looked. Often they laughed, oh, very often. Sometimes they sighed. Sometimes Rei Taro looked far over the castle walls to see the children that went to and fro upon the earth. One night, Rei Den Sama said to Rei Taro, Child, look well this night upon the doings of men. Rei Taro answered, Father, I will look well. From the northern rampart they looked and saw great lords and men-at-arms going forth in battle. From the southern rampart they looked and saw priests and acolytes serving in a holy temple where the air was dim with incense and images of gold and bronze gleamed in the twilight. From the eastern rampart they looked and saw a lady's bower where was a fair princess and troop of maidens clad in rose color that made music for her. There were children there, too, playing with a little cart of flowers. Ha! The pretty children, said Rei Taro. From the western rampart they looked and saw a peasant toiling in a rice field. He was weary enough and his back ached. His wife toiled with him by his side. If he was weary... It is easy to believe that she was more weary still. They were very poor, and their garments were ragged. Have they no children? said Rei Taro. Rei Den shook his head. Presently, Have you looked well, Rei Taro? he said. Have you looked well this night upon the doings of men? Father, said Rei Taro, indeed, I have looked well. Then choose, my son, choose, for I send you to take up your habitation upon the earth. Must I go among men? said Rei Taro. My child, you must. I will not go with the men at arms, said Rei Taro. Fighting makes me very ill. Oh, say you so, my son. Will you go then to the fair lady's bower? No, said Rei Taro. I am a man, neither will I have my head shaved and go and live with the priests. What then? Do you choose the poor present? You'll have a hard life and scanty fare, Reitaro. Reitaro said, They have no children. Perhaps they will love me. Go, go in peace, said Raiden Sama, for you have chosen wisely. How shall I go, my father? said Rei Taro. Honorably, said his father, as it befits a prince of high heaven. Now the poor peasant toiled in his rice field, which was at the foot of the mountain Hakusan in the province of Ichizen. Day after day, after week after week, the bright sun shone. The rice field was dry, and young rice was burnt up. Alack and alas, 
cried the poor peasant man. And what shall I do if my rice crop fails? May the dear gods have mercy on all poor people. With that, he sat himself down on a stone at the rice field's edge and fell asleep for very weariness and sorrow. When he woke, the sky was black with clouds. It was but noonday, but it grew as dark as night. The leaves of the trees shuddered together and the birds ceased their singing. A storm, a storm, cried the peasant. Raiden Sama goes abroad on his black horse beating the great drum of thunder. We shall have rain in plenty, thanks be. Rain in plenty he had, sure enough, for it fell in torrents, with blinding lightning and roaring thunder. Oh, Raid and Sama, said the peasant, saving your greatness, this is even more than sufficient. At this, the bright lightning flashed anew and fell to the earth in a ball of living fire, and the heavens cracked with a mighty peal of thunder. Ay, ay, cried the poor peasant man. Quanon have mercy on a sinful soul, for now the thunder dragon has me indeed. And he lay on the ground and hid his face. Howbeit the thunder dragon spared him, and soon he sat up and rubbed his eyes. The ball of fire was gone, but a babe lay upon the wet earth, a fine fresh boy with the rain upon his cheeks and his hair. O oh, lady, lady Quanon, said the poor peasant man. This is thy sweet mercy. And he took the boy in his arms and carried him to his own home. As he went, the rain still fell, but the sun came out in the blue sky and every flower in the cooler air shone and lifted up its grateful head. The peasant came to his cottage door. Wife, wife, he called. I have brought you something home. What may it be? said his wife. The man answered, Ray Taro, the little eldest son of the thunder. Ray Taro grew up straight and strong, the tallest, gayest boy of all that countryside. He was the delight of his foster parents, and all the neighbors loved him. When he was ten years old, he worked in the rice fields like a man. He was the wonderful weather prophet. My father, he said, let us do this and that, for we shall have fair weather. Or he said, My father, let us do this or that, for tonight there will be a storm. And whatever he had said, so sure enough it came to pass. And he brought great fortune to the poor peasant man, and all his works prospered. When Ray Taro was eighteen years old, all the neighbors were bidden to his birthday feast. There was plenty of good sake, and the good folk were merry enough. Only Ray Taro was silent and sad and sorry. "'What ails you, Ray Taro? said his foster mother. "'You who are wont to be the gayest of the gay, why are you silent, sad, and sorry?' "'It is because I must leave you,' Ray Taro said. "'Nay,' said his foster mother. "'Never leave us, Ray Taro, my son.' Why would you leave us? Mother, because I must, said Ray Taro in tears. You have been our great good fortune. You have given us all things. What have I given you? What have I given you, Ray Taro, my son? Ray Taro answered, Three things you have given me, to labor, to suffer, and to love. I am more learned than the immortals. Then he went from them, and in the likeness of a white cloud he scaled heaven's blue height till he gained his father's castle, and Raiden received him. The two of them stood upon the western rampart of the castle of cloud and looked down to earth. The foster mother stood weeping bitterly, but her husband took her hand. My dear, he said, it will not be for long. We grow old apace. And that is the Japanese folktale of the Good Thunder. And while it ends sadly with the father, the foster father, of accepting his mortality and telling his wife to do the same, it's a lovely story 
of the Son of a God coming down to earth to learn things that only mortals know. How to labor, how to suffer, and how to love. And those he learned from the peasant, and could only learn from the peasant. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.